All right, my friends, how are you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a fresh episode of Do It Better. So we are finally back, my friends, with a fresh episode and the first official episode of Do It Better. This is the series where we are taking my first zoo project, Highland Zoo, and essentially doing it better. We're gonna be leveling the zoo bit by bit, rebuilding it, and hopefully bringing it back with a bang. Now, I did release the introductory episode a couple of weeks ago. I will link that above, my friends, if you would like to find out more information about this series. But today, like I've already said, we're gonna be jumping in and looking at the very first official episode. Now, at the end of the introductory episode, I talked about what we were gonna be doing today. And what we're gonna do first and foremost is we're gonna take a good look at this project and what it looked like before, and then I'm gonna show you what it looked like after. So the main things we're gonna be tackling in today's episode, gang, are of course all of the front of house stuff. We are gonna be taking a good look at the entrance that you can see on the screen now. We're gonna be taking a really good look at the car park, that needed a big rework as well. There's gonna be a lot of information that I provide on the car park though, because I haven't really done exactly um, how it looks right here. Um, there are obviously gonna be changes made as we go along the way. We were gonna take a good look at the infrastructure, mainly the main road that leads up to the zoo entrance. We were gonna take a good look at the tube station. This was just the bog standard entrance and I threw an underground sign on it. Um, I'm gonna talk to you more about this when we get into the after. And we were gonna take a good look at the coffee shop, ticket booths and this basically overall plaza to the opening of Highland Zoo. So I'm sure you can all agree it was a lot of work for me to get done for episode one, but I felt like this was exactly where we needed to start. The entrance needed a big overhaul. I think we needed to take a good look at it, and that's exactly what I've done. Now going into the episode that I'm gonna show you and going into the build, there was obviously key things that I looked at. I've just noted the main things that I worked on, but the big thing that I did notice that the scowl was completely off, the foliage was a complete mess, the road system was just all over the place, and well, I had a big job on my hands. But this was the before, and this is what it looks like after. Yes, this entrance has gone through a major overhaul gang now what we're going to do now is i am going to go through the whole thing we're going to have a really really good look at it we're going to do a big deep dive and essentially this is how all of our episodes are going to be structured week on week i'm going to do um you know the before part first then i'll reveal the after we'll do a really really good look at what um you know what i've built i'll then do a techniques and some tips um section on the video where i'm going to share some of the unique things i did and some of the pieces that i use so that it can help you guys as well i said i was going to do that um, when i was putting the series together and then we will end every episode with a section where i talk about what we're going to do next so there's lots and lots and lots to look at gang so um we're going to do that and as we're looking at it i'm going to provide you with some side by side pro files as well so you can see the changes that have been made now i'm going to save the plaza the entrance and all the stuff behind this for last i think that will make the most sense we'll do the bits that are not as exciting first um and uh, but we'll leave the exciting stuff until the very very end so first and foremost uh car park situation this is how our brand new car park looks gang uh, i basically just wanted to clean the whole thing up i wanted to get some nice basic shape to it proper entrance a proper exit um some barriers nice parking spaces now you will see the back end of the parking lot hasn't been done the large part now i remember when i first did this series i didn't do the large part of the car park at the beginning i just did this small bit but essentially, the reason I haven't put that large car park in is because when we work on other parts of this zoo, you know, like um, over in that direction is actually the bongo habitat. So when we work on parts of this zoo, um, the shape of the zoo might change slightly. So I didn't want to go and smash that massive big car park in just in case I need to widen any areas because I have noticed that it's very, very narrow, this zoo. Um, scale is a big thing that I've had to work on where the project's concerned. Um, 
So this is the new car park. Now, on the screen, I'll put a side-by-side -side profile so you can really see the change. Um, I, I, I think it's difficult. It's easy to look at something before, but when you really look at stuff side-by-side -side in a profile, you'll see just how different this is now. Um, there is a little bit of an unfinished area there. Um, you'll see there is like a, that little shape. There's no planting and whatnot. I wasn't sure what I wanted to put there. I wasn't sure if I wanted to put some like direction signs or some notice boards. So I didn't want to go packing it out with foliage just in case I, I wanted to do that. Um, that foliage behind the um, fence here, this kind of foliage here, is probably temporary because we're going to be obviously working on stuff behind there. The foliage has been the most difficult part of this build because with each episode I'm going to be um, you know, moving on to something new and so I don't want to pack areas out with foliage and like really plant things up in case I have to delete them. It's a lot of work basically that would end up being wasted. Um, yeah, as you can see, uh, that bit of foliage there, but that's the car park. It really, really is what it, you know, needs to be. It just, it's very, very, you know, simple. Um, there's some, you know, little tips here that I'll give you about some of the stuff when we get to that that point. Um, because I get asked lots and lots of questions. And I think having a little tips and techniques uh, section on this video will be perfect. Um, infrastructure, um, the road. Um, is probably a big one that you're all looking at and thinking, where is all those, where have all those bends gone? Where's that wavy road gone? And I was thinking to myself, it probably wouldn't be that realistic to have a big entrance plaza on a bend. It just wouldn't. Um, and so I decided to out the bend. And also what I've done is I've changed the road from normal black um, tarmac path to tarmac plaster pieces. Um, we don't need our guests walking in the road and on the road. So there's just no point in having path there. And plus, the path uses more FPS than pieces do because it is because of the way the game works. It's a piece that guests need to be to navigate the game, and so it actually, the more path you have in the game, um, it will affect your FPS. It was something I was told recently by someone, so it makes sense to kind of just make your custom roads out of plaster pieces, um, you know. And uh, we put a really nice uh, little zebra crossing in this time. We've done all of the road markings as well. So you know, just to, just to keep in, you know. With the consistency of the video, I will put a side by side. Even though this is only kind of like the road system, um, what I'll do is I'll go straight up like this. Um, yeah, I'll put a side by side. Obviously, the angles are not going to be, you know, completely the same game, but I'll try my hardest. But you can see the road has changed absolutely. Um, like, really, really needed to change. All the markings are absolutely bang on. Like, the precision of the pieces in this build. Um, I've used different, I've actually made like measuring pieces um, so I can measure gaps and all sorts like trust me it's, 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 I've gone a bit insane on this one but the whole you know part of this series is I have to do it better than we did it before. Now um, I will address the very small elephant in the room in the train station okay so we technically don't have um, any way for our guests to get into this at the moment there's no spawn points and there's no entry blocks um, the big reason for that is um, the train station um, I was building away building away and then it got to the point where I was like oh, I think I'm finished I can start recording now um, and then I've realized I ain't done the train station. But the thing is, I want to detail the train station quite a lot because I'm going to be putting spawn points. I'm going to hide some spawn points in there. And I'm actually going to have the entrance gates inside the train station. So they appear as ticket styles that we have in our underground stations in the UK. Because I actually didn't want to put the um, you know the, the, the ticket entrance things on the entrance to this zoo. I wanted it to feel a lot more clean. And I've noticed that we don't always have stuff like that anyway, um, you know, in the UK, we don't always have stalls that we walk through. So I was going to use those instead as the ticket barriers in the train station. And I kind of want to do like a nice detailed station. So um, it was going to take a long, long time. I wanted to get this episode out. So hopefully, I know it's part of the brief that I haven't, um, you know, stood by. Hopefully you can all forgive me for not doing that. But, um, you know, I will definitely get that done for next time. Because what would be nice next time is to see guests walking through um, the the zoo basically um, so uh, what else do I need to show you kind of that's at the front we've done the car park we've done the infrastructure um, we've done kind of like I've explained away the uh, the train station um, obviously foliage is a big one you're gonna notice foliage has changed it's really really been cleaned up and stuff but I guess we just have to jump in now to the entrance now I'm gonna show you um, a real good kind of like front profile 
um, of the entrance and uh, we'll do a side by side just for this front profile okay um, this has changed massively now I'm going to be very very honest with you gang when I went and I looked at the um, before it looks smaller the plaza looks a lot smaller the this hasn't changed size. The plaza hasn't changed size. Those perimeter walls are still where they always were. The entrance, um, the, the, the towers, is still where they always were. The roof is still where it always was. Um, the actual shape of the plaza hasn't changed at all. The, the, the actual dimensions of the plaza. But isn't it amazing how you can design it so differently and then the spacing and the shape of something completely changed. Like, don't get me wrong, I leveled the whole stuff. There is nothing left from the previous build. I leveled everything. Obviously, I've gone with a similar design on the walls at the front, as you can see, but they've had a bit of a change. Um, I've made them smaller. Their scale was absolutely enormous. The, the walls were higher than people, whereas now I've brought them down uh, a lot, lot lower. We've got these lovely kind of pylons. I wanted to stick with that nice red brick design we were going with that classic design weren't we so i wanted to stick with that um the walls either side they've been lowered as well as you can see you know we've not got those big lights uh, it's not as garish anymore um so you know really really taking the size down um i have made these custom kind of um banner holders um there's a few boards gang that i haven't done now i thought i'd completed all of the boards and then when i sat down to record this episode I've gone in and I've, you know, gone to add all the items. And then I realised there was a few that I haven't got. So I haven't got any banners yet. So that'll be something that'll be revealed in next episode as well. And there's a couple of other little little balls that haven't been done as well. Um, I just, I think I just forgot about them. I thought I'd done them all. You're going to see that there's a bunch that have been done and they look really, really good. So, um, yeah, hopefully I can be forgiven, basically, for, for not doing the, uh, the balls there. Um, so yeah, let's make our way into the plaza so you can have a really, really good look at uh, at this and, and how this looks now. So I really, really wanted to clean this up. I wanted to go with a very, very, you know, aesthetically pleasing design. And I wanted to try some new stuff as well. I wanted to try to, you know, add some shapes. Um, <coughs> I wanted to have um, the statue as the centerpiece. I always wanted that stag to be, you know, in the middle um, of uh, of the zoo. Um, I am going to be redoing the logo for the zoo. Um, this zoo now I'm going to reveal to you has become part of the ZXS, uh, the ZSX family, which is the zoological society that Tropical Wings belongs under. Now these zoos are now a partnership. They have become one and I think going forward all of my zoos are going to be part of the ZSX family and so uh, as a result both zoos are going to go through a tiny rebrand. Um, I'm going to be honest Tropical Wing Zoo it's not going to go through a massive rebrand but I just want them to kind of you know work in sync and uh, yeah I am going to be changing the logo to Highland Zoo um, that is something that's still in process the zoo hasn't opened its gates officially since joining the ZSX family so they've still got time before they reveal their brand new logo um, and I think the stag is going to be front and centre on the uh, logo. We have the fallow deer now in the game, and I would love to do a fallow deer habitat somewhere in the zoo. Um, and I think that can be like a nice touch. Remember, Highland Zoo is based off of Highland Park, which is very close to where I live. Um, yeah, and um, there are, you know, wild deer in the park, and uh, you know, it's, it, it's it really is amazing. So I think it kind of really ties in, um, you know, with that. But like I was saying, I wanted to make something really aesthetic pleasing. I didn't want to stray too far because we're trying to keep the Highland Zoo charm um, but bring it up to date and add the elements of realism. That was the big thing. We, we needed the realism. Um, so I wanted to go a lot cleaner. So as you can see, um, we've got these nice big kind of grassy verges um, towards the front. Um, we've got these 
red pieces of path. They're quite striking, aren't they? Offset with this nice, like, dark grey. Um, as you can see, this is a real custom job, this flooring. Uh, it took a while. The plaza on itself took me about three hours one evening. Um, but I think you can see that the, the hard graft and the work was very much worth it. Um, I, I genuinely think this is one of the nicest entrance plazas I've made to date. Um, the uh, statue, as you can see, this has been cleaned up massively, like really, really cleaned up. I, I used those gravel um, you know, items that obviously Leaf put on the workshop. Um, I'm trying not to use the workshop that much in this project. I'm going to really, really try to do as much of it as myself. But what I am going to say is there's a few shop items that I am going to use from the workshop because it's easier. Okay, gang, I don't want to be sat making t-shirts and stuff like that because it just is so time consuming. Um, and this is a do it better series and I would rather spend my time, you know, rebuilding, you know, things, you know, basically for for uh, the series. Um, so, yeah, we've got this lovely statue in, in the middle now. Now. Um, I wanted a real like nice mix as well of like some planters with some nice pots um, you know and these new benches in the conservation pack they're just lovely you know you can recolor them however you want they just look so so nice and uh, you know absolutely uh, love those um, so I think one of my benches has gone missing why is there only one bench there okay it doesn't matter we we can we can sort that out at a later date uh yeah and then i put these plant pots as well just to kind of bring a little bit of color now um there is um something i'm going to talk about when we get to the techniques part of today's video um i would imagine these episodes are going to be quite long gang i'm afraid because obviously there's so much to talk about but underneath the floor um there is a vista point and so um people will stand here and have their picture taken i'm hoping it's going to work but i know this technique does work because um it's something that just goran shared a long time ago and it is a game changer and i will share that with you when we get to the next part of uh, today's video so um yeah so uh, i've already shown you kind of a front profile um you know of the of the of the of what this looked like before you know a side by side so i'm not going to do another one you know just for this but if we work towards the entrance now gang as we come up to you know the main building you're going to see this has changed um you know a hell of a lot really really has changed um the towers have actually been um narrowed um at the front so you will see that they're actually um they're longer than they are wide now. Whereas before they were just boxes. They were square blocks that went up into the air. Whereas now they're more of a rectangle shape, basically. Um, and so, um, yeah, they're a lot slimmer at the front. Um, we've really, really, you know, just tried so hard to like make them feel a bit more natural as well. Because before they were just like these big blocks that just kind of went up in the air. Really, really cleaned it all up. We've still got, you know, the, the everything underneath. Um, you know, um, you know, I'll take you in and we'll do side by side comparisons of that. But I'll do a side by side so you can see exactly what I'm on about. So you can see just how much they've actually changed. Like you'll see the roof designs are so different. Um, you know, we've added, you know, windows on there now. Um, you know, the way I've done that square design on the front's really interesting um you know i'll take you in a bit closer in a minute, moment and show you but yeah really really has changed a lot um and the big thing as well is we're now going with like a metal frame rather than that wooden kind of trellis design we've got this really interesting metal frame uh, on the front now instead so yeah this is kind of like how the buildings look gang uh this one i've added loads of like plants and vines because um i've got this area here that i kind of wanted to add loads and loads of plants basically i've added this big bushed up area um that kind of comes onto the back of this building which is very interesting because there never used to be a building here before did there so uh yeah that's going to be a really really cool thing to reveal to you uh, as you can see we've got some nice like highland zoo signs gorilla talk every day we've got things like reptile roundup uh, every day at 1 p.m um so yeah we've kind of got that on there um so that's pretty cool really really love the way that kind of that part of the building looks with all of those vines and whatnot growing over them um this side's a bit cleaner uh, as you can see i made like a little custom like alarm this is like a yow alarm basically it's like a real popular thing kind of in the uk um so yeah i wanted to make like a little alarm thing um we're going with all our little signs and our decals all over the place um you can see look staff access here nice little staff access gate that kind of goes out the back that way um 
and uh, yeah, this is kind of like the other side. So this is what it looks like when it's like a little bit um, sort of cleaner. The roof design is like really, really unique, gang. Like obviously I've custom the roof because um, I couldn't find anything to fit because I've scaled everything down. Everything's so much smaller now. So um, I think that's one, I think because the building's been scaled down slightly, that's probably why the plaza appears to look a bit larger as well. But um, yeah, it's been scaled down slightly, so I had to make a custom roof. It's kind of left with no choice, but um, it's essentially all it is, gang. It's just, um, you know, wooden panels just overlaid, and then you get these ones that you just put uh, uh, sort of on the corners. And then I did this really kind of like weird little um, arch design here, uh, and then I put like a, a little like red light on this one, and over the other side there's no light, but I just thought it'd be interesting to kind of add a little something like that. Um, so yeah, that's I actually really love that. I think it, it just adds a, a really kind of cool, unique bit of um, you know shape um, to the building. This roof hasn't really changed much. All that we have changed is obviously it's all custom made now because I wanted it to look the same. I wanted it to tie in. Um, we've used the new guttering as well on the front, and um, it's quite large the new guttering. But because of these lovely clips and stuff that are on it, oh my god, it's gorgeous. It really, really does look really, really cool, and it's a lot more. UK, it feels so much more kind of European and UK, so yeah, really, really cool, absolutely loving that. As you can see, we've got this metal framework here. This is where the uh, the logo will go on the front of this bit of framework here, but because I haven't um, I haven't completed the logo yet to tie in with the rebrand for the new zoos, um, I have decided to just kind of leave it off for now. Um, so something I have added a lot um, in this project is um, I've added loads of these signs. Now I noticed when I was looking at zoos, there's just loads of these, a bunch of them. They're all over the gaff and so um, I decided I was going to throw loads of them in and so yeah I've just been making like loads of these custom signs so, like tickets this way, um, you know, you can, so ZSX. There you go, lovely job, it's there. Highland Zoo closes at 6 p.m. today. Uh, visit our information bag, checks in progress, and then just another like, uh, you know, closing times one. So yeah, I just wanted to keep um, keep uh, doing this sort of stuff um, to kind of tie in with the, the realism and, you know. I, I, so much has been added to the game since Highland Zoo was built. So not only has my build style come on, but there's lots and lots of things that have been added to this game that will just take this to another level, you know you know, strap on the rocket and off you go kind of thing. Um, I put these little signs here as well, ZSX, Highland Zoo, you know, this way. Um, you know, there's one there, members, so the members can go here, uh, save a bit of time basically. Um, I'm just gonna get a side-by-side -side comparison of this. So basically this is where the uh, the bathroom used to be, um, and then we had like a little kind of um, area that was kind of closed off. It used to have the giraffe feeding times on it and stuff, but um, as you can see, we've moved those boards to the sides of the buildings. Um, the toilet blocks changed and loads. Obviously I've, I've just learned so much stuff, gang. I've learned so many different techniques. We now have, you know, these bathroom doors on, um, you know, custom made doors, um, you know, they look really, really cool and just a big change from having that big open gap. Um, I'll take you in closer so you can see the doors. Um, if you're wondering how I achieved these really small like stickers, I will tell you all in the technique section. Uh, it's actually really interesting how you can do this, but yeah, the little custom made doors, just, uh, you know, essentially these are just plastic pieces and, and whatnot. So yeah, but they just look really, really cool. Just really effective doors basically. And then what I will do as well is I'll just bring you over this side and I'll try my best to do a side-by-side -side comparison for this side as well. Obviously, we used to have our buggy hire. It was almost like a guest services is what the building used to be. Um, it's now more kind of like an inquiries stand. Um, you know, I'm using different uh i'm using different kind of bench designs because i didn't want everything to be the same so i have just kind of just used benches that maybe you know stores stores that don't represent exactly what they are but um i think we needed to do it because there was just so many information buildings and i'll get into it more when we when we get to the next bit but yeah, I'll take you in close now so you can take a good look at this building. And so this has changed big time, gang. Really, really has changed. Like the other building was like huge and just wasn't very attractive at all. Um, 
you know, it had lots going on and it was just, uh, it was just a bit strange. Uh, but we've got all these nice little barriers in now, which I, I really, really like. Um, we've got this little TV screen up here. This, this actually plays, uh, this actually plays a video. This isn't just a, a Highland Zoo logo, but um, I'll let that. I'll let that be revealed in the cinematics. I think that probably makes more sense than kind of doing it now. Um, this bit in the middle has changed. I'm not going to do a side by side because we kind of caught a glimpse of it with the um, with the uh, bathroom uh, sort of side by side. But this is different now. This is really different. There used to be like a wooden uh, part here, a little wooden partition, and it had like the giraffe feeding times on it and and whatnot. Now what I've done is I've just kind of added in this kind of seating. Now it is um, it is like just for show it, there's no benches hidden in here or whatnot we've just put this nice like seating in i might put some uh notice boards up on the walls maybe a map on here but i'm not done it because we're not ready to do that we're not kind of at that point with the with the project so um yeah but there's some nice wall space there but also this is a nice little seating area because what i am going to be doing as well at a later date is I've added this little green wall back here and basically this is a green screen wall and I'm gonna add you know like a laptop on a on a on a pylon basically and this is gonna be where people have their photo taken and obviously does like a little green screen and I thought this was like a really really cool little idea I see a few places that have done this like a few zoos have got this sort of stuff and I thought that it would be quite cool and I quite like the whole like green screen um, you know feel about that as well so you don't have to worry about messing around trying to make a design and whatnot you just kind of go with this green screen area and then this is essentially kind of like where you sit and you wait uh, for your photo maybe to be printed or you sit and wait your turn um, I thought that seating would basically just kind of do multiple purposes essentially so yeah absolutely buzzing with that I think it really looks uh, cool um, and uh, yeah, this is just a better look at kind of the inside of the entrance now. And again, it feels a lot larger. Feels like there's more space. Um, you know, it feels like there's, there's you know, a lot more going on. Uh, essentially, this box here would be for the shutters that would come down. They come down through this gap here. Um, so the shutters would come down when the zoo closes. The shutters all go, um, you know, across. Now, I remember Highland Zoo was heavily, heavily inspired by London Zoo. Um, especially the entrance so if anyone's watching this for the first time and they're like that is one of the best London Zoo recreations I've ever seen you have Highland Zoo project to thank because it that's essentially what it was based on first and foremost so yeah um, you know that's why we've got all of the kind of basic shapes and whatnot but yeah again I really hope I've kept all of the charm of the original kind of uh, original build gang. You know, I tried to keep these pylons, but just do them a bit better, tidy them up, make them a bit smaller, uh, supporting blocks, you know, kind of on the walls and whatnot. I just really, really wanted to do it justice, uh, to be to be completely honest with you. Now we come through here, and uh, this is kind of like the, the plaza from, from behind now, gang. Uh, you will remember the roof was quite unique in that it had that pitch part of the front, but it was, um, it was flat at the back and I've carried that on but um, essentially you know I've put all of our little bits and bobs in here and they just look a bit better you know we've put all these piping in and some vents and whatnot I think it really really looks nice actually we've got this vent that goes up and into the wall um, just looks a bit different you know very very different to how it looked before so um, first and foremost let's tackle the kind of plaza and the shop because this has really changed. This is this is one of the biggest changes so far to the whole kind of do it better for, for this build. Now, um, I'll do a side by side. Um, you're gonna see the, 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 the plaza. It feels so open and fresh now. It really, really does. Um, I think that before it had that gigantic coffee shop I, I, that had no room inside. It was really strange. I, well, obviously I was taking a good look at everything when I was destroying it because I was like, as I was destroying things, I was having to think to myself, okay, so this has got to go there, that's got to go there, we're going to place this and that, and are we going to replace this shop? There was lots of things I had to go through, you know, when I was thinking about it, but we had this big old coffee shop, it barely had any any space inside, it had like one bench for people to sit at, which was really, really strange. Um, so yeah, there was there was kind of like that, which was which was a bit odd. I am thinking about adding a couple of benches over near that that um, that wall, but at the same time, because this is an entrance plaza, I kind of didn't want Want people to be kind of stopping here if that makes sense you're going to want to feed people into the zoo don't you so as you can see from that side by side um big change coffee shop's gone we now have got a smaller shop 
and uh, obviously we've got this like little lean-to with some vending machines there used to be a couple of um, ATMs there but I'm gonna be putting them on the wall of the um, train station because remember the entrance points are gonna be inside the train station so they will use them as if they're part of the zoo and I think that's just a bit more realistic um, and then yeah as you can see really opened it all up we leveled the old logo because um, we are going to be redoing that but let's take them off so we can have a really really good look so first and foremost we've got this area over here now what I've decided to do this time is I've actually extended this building out um, and this is essentially representing the toilet block um, because the toilet block would be slightly larger so that's basically what that's doing we've put this little window here as well um, and then um, over here um, this is kind of like our new staff gates and access so they go out that way basically uh, to the you know the staff points and whatnot and then we've kind of got this little um, this little part of the extension basically of the roof here with a couple of vending machines underneath underneath it and a nice little planter at the back you know with some nice bushes in um, there is a lovely new bush in the game that um, just makes for the best you know kind of hedge uh, filler uh, along walls it looks amazing um, so yeah this is kind of like the new kind of fence design that we're going with the new kind of iron fence design that I'm going with here um, we've got some power boxes um, you know back here um, and then we've kind of got this pathway again this is kind of like staff access this is actually going to be the exit point that takes uh, guests out of the zoo I have not changed this at all I just kind of lined it up with the wall um, but this is still kind of like the old one its placement used to be all the way up here and it made zero zero sense why it was there but that's you know it's just one of those things um obviously i've done all the planting back here i've gone really like heavy and dense with like bushes and stuff um i really kind of wanted to like pack these areas out so I've gone really really heavy and then it is next to like a nice clean bit here um with this highland zoo sign which i really like it's kind of like what you first see when you're coming out of the car park um, so I felt like we needed something there. Obviously, this is unfinished because we're going to be working on other areas, you know, in in uh, in the future. So didn't want to carry on too much that way. Um, so yeah, that's like that nice little area there, kind of all covered over. And then um, if we come over this way, you're going to see the shop changed big time. We've now got this beautiful wall that runs all the way along with this lovely fence design. Um, I've done it in green. There's uh, not many items being used there. I love that fence design. Like really 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 love it um i really want to start mixing in more metals and woods together and just like uh just combining these things a bit more so out with the old restaurant and in with this new little beautiful box restaurant now essentially it's not a restaurant it's a bit of a snack stop to be honest with you uh, essentially you know you go into the zoo you're not really going to stop are you um, and uh, you know uh, stop and sit and have a coffee and a sandwich you, you once you get there you usually go in but I feel this is a really cool place where you can go grab yourself a bag of crisps some chocolate or whatever you can take them with you and then you've got them for the kids as you're walking around the zoo and that sort of stuff so yeah just kind of wanted to add something like this uh, here really really love the look like scaling is a big thing in this game obviously we all know that scales get out of control but you know scaled this down um, and this is kind of what we came up with gang so yeah we've got this lovely kind of like uh, opening here these boxes of again obviously just to kind of represent um, you know um, the whole idea of uh, the shutters coming down and whatnot. Again, there is some notice balls that aren't done. We just need to kind of fill some stuff in. Um, we've got some uh, condiments, shakers and whatnot. Um, and, uh, and then you come around this side and we've got another window. So yeah, I kind of added two. What's really cool about these benches is that you can get multiple kind of, um, you know, counters in one place so if I take you inside look how close the counters are able to be um, and it really doesn't affect anything so um, yeah I'm absolutely loving I loving that um, really basic inside we probably do need to add stuff I'd probably like to add like a little like fridge basically there um, but yeah I just didn't get round to kind of making that um, all them, them little them little things are quite difficult so they actually take up the time um, so yeah we've got um, maybe something to go there but yeah absolutely loving that little restaurant um, I love all the little details we've got the door obviously around this side and then the roof uh, up here with um, you know some vents and whatnot and I've gone with a 
green roof. People are always telling me, Dan, you really need to start changing up all your roof designs. And it was something I was really conscious of, actually. So you, you will see there's loads of different materials on all of the roofs, you know? Metals here. You've got concrete, you've got woods, you've got this that represents like a plasticky type stuff. Um, so yeah, I really, really am conscious. I do listen to you, you guys, gang, when I when I am building, and you know, I put it, I try to put it all into practice. Next up is the ticket booths. I will put a side by side comparison on the screen for you, gang. Um, this is the new kind of ticket booth area. Um, and I will then obviously do a little flip reverse of the other side and we'll do a side by side of that. But these are the new ticket booths basically. Um, they are very different to how they looked before. Uh, really, really different design as well um, where the roof is concerned. Um, but um, I, I love this, I really, really like this. I love the way these look. Um, and the ticket booths themselves are going to be a workshop item. I actually, for a change, built these so that they could be you know modular so to speak so that you can use them so i will be sharing those at some point um so yeah let's take a good look and like a bit of a closer look so as you can see there's lots of little details here we've got fences we've got little gates that close with all of the little items you know the handles all of the the little locks and whatnot um if we move along this way you're going to see it's really really consistent wanted to kind of like use this design you know as we go along we've carried this wall design on with uh, all this foliage kind of behind as well uh, to kind of close it all in if you take a good look at the uh, kind of like all of the trellises and all the roof design it's very intricate gang like i really wanted this to be you know realistic at the end of the day i, I really wanted to hammer that that home for you guys um so yeah that's kind of our that's all looking inside um there are some screens here believe it or not that i need to do as well and uh i forgot about them because obviously they just kind of camouflage in with the building so um yeah just kind of forgot about those ones unfortunately um and then uh yeah if we go in this way i'll give you a good look at what the ticket offices kind of look like so um yeah it is quite difficult because of this fence behind but this is the ticket office gang loads of like weird little shapes that i managed to achieve uh, on this one i use like roof trims and whatnot uh, loads of different pieces that i wouldn't usually kind of use to make this sort of building have been used for this now inside each one of these are information uh you know stalls basically gang got them really close as well so we've been able to get two people to a pod um there's your tickets and there's your ticket prices just keeping in with the whole um vibe of the zsx uh, you know family 6 p.m closing today um you know 25 19 they're, they're very similar prices to that of um uh, tropical wings zoo obviously tropical wings doesn't have a members price but now that they are part both part of zsx maybe that's something we should introduce over there um but uh yeah so that's kind of um that's what we're doing gang uh there's all the signs there really really loving those little stickers that go onto the windows and then yeah if we just dive inside and show you what it looks like in here this is what we're dealing with so yeah look how close you have managed to get those little uh those little desks which i absolutely love uh and then yeah the kind of desk all follows her along the back and uh yeah it's really really cool like pretty basic inside but as you can see all the windows all kind of like work together and uh you know if we come this way you'll see there's uh there's a few of these booths i probably should have used this one actually to show you because you can get a really really good look at the front of the building uh if we carry on this way you'll see there is another one here and then if we flip it round, there's one here i left this one open with double gates and this is more for disabled uh people like wheelchair access basically i thought that made sense to have at least one entry point that was a little bit wider um for our guests um that have um those needs um while we're here because i have shown you this kind of ticket office um i didn't kind of show you inside uh we're using a, a, a just a, a like a memento shop i thought that made sense to just kind of change it up a little bit uh, this is what this uh, this little place looks like inside this is for the shutters and it's just some wires or whatnot to represent that we've got like a little uh, cabinet down here with some items on um, that's something i'm going to do a lot of in this project i really really want to kind of hammer that home um, if we come in here there is going to be a 
rack on the wall there. Um, I've made one already in Tropical Wings, and I was just going to go over and nick it, but I I didn't bother. It takes um, a while to load Tropical Wings Zoo up, so I decided against it. But um, we've got our broom on the wall, and then, uh, yeah, I'll stick that in at a later date. And then I feel like we could have um, some nice racking over here as well with a bunch of storage on, because it's um, a bit of open space, really, at the moment. But if you flip around that way, you've got a window that looks out onto the plaza, and then this is our staff um, entry and exit door to uh, this building basically so yeah it's just nice I wanted it to be really intricate I wanted it obviously I'm going for realism so I didn't just want to have uh, buildings that went nowhere so yeah that's kind of like the little staff door it's very tight it is really really tight but but I like that about it I feel like that's quite real and that's um that's something that I really really wanted to kind of touch upon and hammer home but yeah that's the sort of um, second part of the entrance plaza. It's really, really beautiful. I hope you all agree. And then we are gonna go over here, gang. And this is where it's changed a lot. And um, why is that not the right color? Let me just change that, gang, because that's gonna wind me right up. Let me just change that, okay. Um, I do need to do some explaining back here because it's gonna look a bit unfinished in a couple of places, but um, you know, any area that looks a little unfinished, there's always going to be um, a reason for it, an explanation for it, and I will obviously supply that, um, you know, e in each of the episodes. Now, I really don't know um, how to get the best side-by-side -side photo for this, but I guess we'll just go with that. This is going to be the side-by-side -side profile, and um, yeah, you're going to see this has really changed, really changed. There used to be like that big statue in the middle. There wasn't a shop back there there was nothing there it was just kind of like a walk into the zoo basically but i decided to add a shop um really changed the plant in fences like this this part really changed like this had a big upgrade and i think that this looks amazing now i really really do i think this looks top notch so i'm absolutely loving this now so yeah, this is just the backside of the ticket offices gang, like in keeping the doors on the back and whatnot, very kind of similar design, um, kind of keeping all of this tied in and whatnot. Um, this is your wheelchair access around this way. I have managed to sink some benches into the wall, so that's really cool. We'll see some people sitting on the walls and stuff um, as and when the zoo opens. Um, and then yeah, if you come over this way, there is like a little passageway between the two buildings. So decided to add some staff gates uh, on here kind of gone with wood on the front because I wanted to you know keep in with the style and then we've gone with a kind of cast iron one back there this door goes into the shop you know, I'm always thinking about these things and I gang like where places go um, where people go good staff and whatnot um, but yeah as you can see kind of got this little bit of gutter in here that runs down now I didn't want like guttering on the front I didn't want that to be obvious and with this kind of lip the water probably would kind of gather a little bit so we've um, we've kind of put it up on the on the top as you can see, we've got another one of those little gaps with a few like roof designs and, and stuff. Um, but yeah, this new shop is, is a big change, like a really, really big change. Now, what I have wanted this to represent was kind of like a guest services, but kind of a general kind of, um, not so much souvenirs, but just general goods that you might need. Now, I know London Zoo has actually got one of these shops, and this is actually based off of London Zoo's one. It's, it, it is very much a like for like. It's a bit of a copy. I was very inspired by London Zoo's um, shop that they've got here. Um, and it's called the Lion's Den. And essentially in there, it's got like flip flops and like it's got t-shirts and it's got socks and umbrellas. And it's where you can rent um, wheelchairs and uh, buggies. And basically it's a bit more of a shop where like, say like your kid might have ripped its shirt or you broke your shoe or you might, you forgot your sunglasses. There's basically everything you could want in that shop so that you can go and buy it. And so it's kind of like a general kind of amenity shop and that's the feel I was going for that's kind of what I wanted to do now this shop needs a name I didn't want to call it the Lion Den I didn't want it to be called the same one as like London Zoo so feel free in the comment section gang to like let me know for some uh, names for this shop because I'd like to have a, a unique name as you can see there are some some um, you know things on there waiting to go and waiting for me to kind of um, you know put that shop name on so yeah this is just a, a lovely looking building I really really love this like really fits in you know with uh, the rest of the build Whether that red brick because I wanted it to feel part of the entrance um, with the trim and whatnot. If I just take you inside, it's really kind of open in here. Um, I was thinking about putting something in the middle, but then I thought because of like the push 
yeah, it's like, I feel like it would just be a bit more open. Maybe we'd have like a, another like t-shirt rack there or something just to take up a bit of the room. But um, yeah, I feel like it would be a bit open. I threw in a pip shot in here because I thought it'd be nice to have a little vending machine. But um, majority of the items on the wall, like these are things that I found on the workshop, all the t-shirts and whatnot and the, the little plushies. Um, I added a bit of rope to the plushies so that we could hang them. Um, what I've done here, um, I don't know if this is like um, relevant like worldwide, but in the UK we have these like, we I notice it in like, like in some like cheap shoe shops basically where we'll have this wall and it'll be like some cladding um, but it'll have these little gaps and essentially that's where the little metal hanger hooks get um, you put and then they hang stuff off of those hooks and so I wanted to kind of recreate that and that's what I've done and I basically just used the new um, the new gutter um, you know uh, fixings and if you look it actually looks like they're in the gap there basically and then we've kind of hung all of the items off of it and I thought that was like really really cool it's just something a bit different like I feel like my shops always just look the same like they're just a bit boring they're kind of just a few little cabinets and they're filled and they're filled with all the amazing stuff that you'll find on the workshop um, but yeah like we've got these umbrellas as well I got those off the workshop there is some stuff in here that I that I made myself um, but we've got like a little postcard um, holder there we've got these these uh, these buggies these are amazing these I found these on the workshop and I was like I've got to have them uh, in the zoo um, they're, they're absolutely um, top-notch uh, just kind of put some shells over here some more plushies uh, these cameras I thought were really really cool um, uh, and then we've got these I know this was made by Eben these are like those little um, you know toys that you've got the little uh, the little trigger thing and it makes the mouth move really like them put a little plushie on there as well we're using the hats fantastic I thought you know it's better to change the shop up um, and then I made this little rack here um, on the front it's just uh, essentially just some metal things but they go into the desk um, and then we just added some shelves and then uh, the new LEDs and the ends of the guttering just make for really really cool things to kind of represent you know sweets and stuff like that um, and then I made this as well this is this was my first attempt at trying to build like a freezer I think it looks alright doesn't it I don't think it looks too bad it's just um, it's just like plastic um, you know shapes and then just a few like little uh, light ends of the lights and some uh, you know uh, some uh, hinges and stuff like that and then on top it's just layered glass and then use the uh, the fan shape to kind of like uh, make the make the slidey door um, but yeah I really like it actually I think I did not a bad job not a bad job I know there's some on there that are probably a bit better than that a bit more detailed uh, and then I've put this here because I was going to put a sticker for the brand of ice cream um, but um, I was going to ask you guys if you think we should stick with all the branding that's in the game because if we do then I'll make some custom um, you know um, some custom oh, what's the brand name is it milk the, the cow I can't, I can't remember the bloody um, name of the brand, but yeah, I'll make some custom ones to go on there, essentially. But yeah, that's the inside of the building. That's the door that goes out. This goes to a storage room in here. I am going to put all of the racking in here. Um, whether or not I'll fill it with items, probably not, but I'll just put like loads of uh, boxes and stuff on the shelves. But I am going to put the racking in there. I think it makes sense to kind of do that. And maybe even put some spare like push chairs and whatnot uh, behind there. So yeah, that is the new gifty shop. And then uh, if you're flipping reversing and you're looking at this area, you're going to see there's a big mulched area there, a bit of a raised bed. I haven't done that because obviously we're going to be working here. And I wasn't sure about the entrance path because this has changed a lot because this used to come, like, literally used to come up this way but I actually made I took this in a little bit because I wanted it to be closer to the wall um, and then we've got the um, we've got the bag check area basically so we've just got these tables um, and this is where you get your bags checked before entering the zoo there is um, a, 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 the ability to go there so if you don't have a bag security would obviously fast track you down this way uh, so yeah I left all this because um, I wasn't sure if I was going to bring the path this way and whenever I do planting it always affects the path because I, it's, I, it's whether or not I want to hide something it's whether or not I want to disguise something so it, it, I, bet, I always think it's best not to put the plants in if I think it's going to affect an area that I've got to work on on, uh, in the future basically so yeah and then the other bit was that I just kind of put this 
fence design uh, around here. We have got a bench there. I was thinking about putting another couple of benches like along that wall, maybe. I, I, I just think when I was looking at pictures of zoos, there's so much seating. There's so much like all over the place. And um, I don't think we add near enough um, when we're making these Planet Zoo projects. As you can see, we've still gone with this custom design on the floor. I've left this because I'm not sure if this is gonna change slightly as we are now officially kind of entering the zoo there, gang. But um, yeah, that is that is the new entrance plaza, the new car park, the new bit of planting, the new everything. I really hope you've enjoyed that. And the first thing, and the only thing I really need to ask at this point is, do you think I've done it better? If you think I have, make sure you are smashing the like on this video and giving me a big thumbs up in the comment section below. So I'm aware, gang, that today's episode was a very, very long one, but it was a lot of stuff to get through. And I would kind of said in today's episode that I was going to do that technique section. But what I'm going to do, gang, is I'm going to release that as a separate video in a, uh, a, uh, probably tomorrow, actually. I'll release it either tomorrow or the day after. I'll release it as a separate video because I think that that video on itself would actually be a really, really cool video to do with you so that I can show you how things were built and how things were changed um, in this project. I think that makes real perfect sense and what we're going to do now instead is we're going to move on to um, the next part and that's what we're going to do in next episode so next episode gang we are going to be working on a lot of stuff again we're actually going to be working on two areas because i feel like i want to um, you know mash these bits out um, straight away because um after that we can start on the animals and i think that's what you all really want to see is what i'm going to do with the animals in this project but there are still big parts of the infrastructure that need to be sorted and i think that's where we're going to go next so first on the list of things to do is this back lot area this is where all of our staff services are and it's got some uh, storage facilities it's got a little um a little veg patch there um, basically this is all going to be needed to sort out so that's the first thing on the agenda the next bit after that is we're going to sort out the exit point for the zoo because we need to put a new exit point in we need it to look a lot more in keeping with the new design and the project as a whole and then after that gang we are going to be working on these two shops and that little vista at the end the little viewing platform um, the reason i wanted to work on this is because these shops obviously are going to need a bit of an upgrade but this pathway needs widening there's lots of changes that need to be made so that is going to be the next episode and so there you have it my friends we're done and dusted for the very first official episode of do it better highland zoo i hope you've enjoyed that my friends i really really do and i would really appreciate it if you could all be leaving your comments below let me know what you've made of this build do you think i've done it better what are some of your favorite bits and as i'm going to be doing that techniques video if there's anything you'd really really like to know how i built it make sure you let me know in the comment section below as well i hope you've all given me a thumbs up already for the whole did i do it better but if you haven't done so but you have enjoyed the episode make sure you drop me a like on the video if if you feel the need to give me a thumbs down and a dislike, be sure to leave me some constructive criticism in the comment section below, and I'll try my hardest to do a bit better. I really, really appreciate you all sticking with me for today's episode. I realise it was a long one, but there was lots to get through. I hope you've enjoyed it, though, my friends. If you're new around here, consider subscribing. Uh, but until next time, my friends, I will see you all later. Stay safe, stay humble. Until the next one, laters.